This video introduces equations for lines and planes in three-dimensional space. Please pause the video for a moment and try to decide if the line through this pair of points is parallel to the line through that pair of points. I'm going to represent the first pair of points schematically as two points on the plane, even though they're really two points in space. Now the line between the pair of points goes in a direction parallel to the vector determined by subtracting coordinates. That is, the vector with components 2, 6, negative 4. Similarly, the line between the other pair of points goes in a direction parallel to this vector that I get by subtracting coordinates. So my two lines will be parallel if and only if my two vectors are parallel. In other words, if and only if v is a scalar multiple of w. In fact, it's easy to check that v is negative 2 fifths times w, and so the two lines are indeed parallel. Now suppose I want the equation of a line through the origin that's parallel to the line through these two points. So that's a line in space that heads off in the direction of v. So if I place v like I have done with its tail end at the origin, then the point at the tip of v, so that's the point 2, 6, negative 4, will be on my line. So will the point halfway along v, that would be the point 1, 3, negative 2, and the point at the tip of 2v, that would be the point 4, 12, negative 8, will also be on my line. In fact, any point with coordinates 2t, 6t, negative 4t will be on my line. That would be the point at the tip of the vector t times v. In other words, the line through the origin that is parallel to v will consist of all points of the form x equals 2t, y equals 6t, and z equals negative 4t, where t is a real number. Notice that negative values of t correspond to points on this end of the line. Now that was the line through the origin that was parallel to the line through these two points. Next, let's find the equation of the actual line through these two points. This line will also be parallel to v, but it'll have to be shifted off the origin to go through these two points. For example, if I focus on this point, then I see that the line will have to be shifted to go over in the x direction by negative 4, over, down in the y direction by negative 6, and up in the z direction by 1. So it'll look something maybe like, like this. Algebraically, we can do that shifting by just subtracting 4 from the x values, subtracting 6 from the y values, and adding 1 to the z values. To summarize, if I want a line through the origin that goes parallel to a vector v, I just multiply my components of v by the variable t. And if I want a line parallel to v that goes through a particular point, I do the same thing and then add the coordinates of that point. Of course, I could have used the other point, and I would have gotten another set of equations that's in fact equivalent to the first set of equations. To see that these two systems of equations define the same line, we can just call the second variable s instead of t, and then make the substitution s equals t minus 1. In other words, plugging in t minus 1 for s here gives us the following, which after a little bit of algebra reduces to the first system of equations. These systems of equations are called parametric equations for the line. The parameter is t, and physically we can think of this as a particle moving along a line, t describing the time, and x, y, and z describing the position of that particle at time t. More generally, if we want to describe a line through a point x0, y0, z0 in the direction of the vector a, b, c, we can describe it with the parametric equations x equals at plus x naught, y equals bt plus y naught, 
and z equals ct plus z naught. Remember, if x naught, y naught, z naught weren't there, then our equations would just describe a point at the tip of a vector t times our original vector. But by adding x naught, y naught, and z naught, we've shifted that line over so that it'll go through the point x naught, y naught, z naught. Now if we take our parametric equations and solve for t, we get t equals x minus x naught over a, t equals y minus y naught over b, and t equals z minus z naught over c. And now if we set these expressions for t equal to each other, we get x minus x naught over a equals y minus y naught over b equals z minus z naught over c. The equations in this format are called the symmetric equations for the line. Finally, we can describe the line with a vector equation. R is a vector that's a function of t whose components are given by at plus x naught, bt plus y naught, ct plus z naught. The vector equation is very similar to the parametric equations. Geometrically, we think of our line going through space and a point on the line whose coordinates are given by the parametric equations can also be thought as the tip of a vector starting at the origin. So this we can think of as the vector r of t. Physically, as we think of a particle moving along the line over time, we can think of a vector with its, or its a tail at the origin sweeping along that line with its tip always on the line. We've looked at equations for lines, now let's take a look at equations for planes. Suppose we want to find the equation of a plane through the point negative 3, 2, 0 and perpendicular to the vector with components 1, negative 2, 5. I'll call that perpendicular vector v. Now if I take any point x, y, z on my plane, then the vector from the given point to the point x, y, z has to be perpendicular to my vector v. In terms of dot product, that means the vector x minus negative 3, y minus 2, z minus 0 dotted with the vector v is going to have to be 0. Rewriting, I get the equation 1 times x plus 3 minus 2 times y minus 2 plus 5 times z minus 0 is equal to 0. That's the equation of my plane. And more generally, the plane through the point x naught, y naught, z naught perpendicular to a vector a, b, c is going to have to be given by the equation a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals 0 for the very same reason. That reason being that the dot product of the two vectors has to be 0. It's possible to rewrite this equation as follows. Note that my variables here are x, y, and z, and all other letters stand for constants. In this video, we found three forms for the equation of a line and two forms for the equation of a plane.